I'm going to walk you through a start to finish edit of the Ring Nebula RCW118 using Affinity Photo and the additional astrophotography macros to speed up the workflow process. First, I've unzipped the data from Telescope Live and sorted it into Hydrogen Alpha, Oxygen 3, and Sulfur 2 folders. To stack this data, I'll go to File, New Astrophotography Stack and I'll use the file group functionality to quickly stack all three datasets. I'll click Add Files, go into the HA folder, select all the data, and click Open. I'll choose H Alpha from the Filter dropdown. This will not affect the data itself, but will tag the resulting data layer as H Alpha, making it easier to identify the layers once all the data is stacked. Now I'll click here to create a new file group and I'll change this filter to OIII. Then click Add Files and navigate to the Oxygen 3 data. If you are on Mac OS, there is a useful little feature whereby you can simply select the folder and click Open. This will recursively add all of the files from that folder. I'll create a third file group. Tag it as SII, then add the Sulfur 2 data. Because the Telescope Live data comes pre calibrated, I can now simply click Stack and wait for all the data to be aligned and stacked together. Once stacking has completed, I can click and view the stacked data layers down here. I'm happy that the data looks clean and high quality so I'll click Apply up here. This moves to the main photo persona or workspace, and I now have these three data layers, plus levels and curves adjustments in my layer stack. These two adjustments are providing initial tone stretching, but because I'll be using the macros, I'll remove these shortly. First, I'm going to install the macros. An easy way to do this is to navigate to the directory where I extracted them from the zip file. Then drag drop the three dot AF macros files onto the user interface. The macros will install and the library panel will also appear automatically. I now need to rename these layers in order for the tone stretching and color mapping macros to work correctly. I'll double click into the H alpha layer and name it HA. Then I'll rename the Oxygen 3 layer to OIII and Sulfur 2 to SII. Now I'll select and delete these two adjustment layers, which will remove the initial tone stretching. I'll look in the 32 bit macro category and run Mono Log Stretch. SHO. This will take the three data layers and tone stretch them significantly. At the moment, though, I'm only seeing the Sulfur 2 result, so these three layers need to be color mapped and blended together. I can quickly achieve this using the data setup macros. For example, I'll run SHO composition setup. This maps Sulfur 2 to red, hydrogen alpha to green and Oxygen 3 to blue. Moving back to the main 32-bit category, I might then run Enhance SII Mono Layer. This will duplicate and enhance the content of the Sulfur 2 layer, but the result is far too strong. With this layer selected, I can bring the opacity down simply by using the number keys. For example, I'll type 2 for 20% opacity. Hiding this layer, and showing it again, reveals that this adds a nice amount of red detail around the background and star areas. Before doing any more work on this image, I'll want to try and tame the star detail so I can push the nebula tones further without over brightening the stars. For this, I'll use the Reduce Star Intensity macro. The initial result is quite dramatic, but I do want some star detail to remain present. So I'll take this new layer opacity down to 
which just brings back some of the fainter stars. Next, I'll go for Enhanced Nebula Structure. This enhances the texture and contrast of the nebula detail and helps to draw the viewer's eye to it. Now I am conscious of this bright area up here. Further tonal work could very easily overexpose it. To help mitigate this, I'll use the Highlight Recovery macro. Then click on the thumbnail here to open the dialog. The Highlight Recovery is slightly too aggressive, so I'll bring the Highlights Strength slider back to around minus 50. Then close the dialog and fit to screen again with Command 0 on Mac, Control 0 on Windows. Another useful macro I can use at this point is Reduce Background Luminosity. This will further separate the background tones from the deep sky object tones. Now at this point in the editing process, I like to start working on color. Scrolling down the macro list, I might try Enhance Green Signal. This is almost always too strong at full opacity, so I'll take it down to 20%. I'll also use Enhance Yellow Signal. Again, this is way too strong, so I'll take this down to 20% opacity as well. Both of these layers combined produce a pleasant enhancement to the green and yellow color tones. Now I'll scroll back up and I'll use Highlight Protected Tone Lift. This is a great general purpose option for lifting tones in the image and adding in some more contrast without blowing out the highlights. On top of this, I can experiment with something like Weighted Intensity Mixer. This is a bit dramatic at first, so I'll click into the layer icon here and bring Intensity Blend all the way to the right. Then I might also take the opacity down to 50%. The result is further contrast between the background and deep sky object detail, helping the latter to really pop out. Finally, I'll complete the edit with some sharpening. When it comes to sharpening, I would really advise working on a case-by-case -case basis. Some images would benefit from bandpass sharpening, which is very similar to the absolute point of focus sharpening technique that has become quite popular. But if I apply the micro variant, on this image, everything becomes too excited. There's just too much visual noise. Instead, I'll delete that and try Gaussian kernel sharpening. This tends to make star detail appear very sharp and concise, but the result is more subtle than bandpass sharpening. A good piece of advice is to always preview any sharpening or blurring at 100% zoom or one to one reproduction. This will ensure the most accurate preview due to Affinity Photo's MIP mapping technique, where lower resolution tiles are used at smaller zoom levels to improve performance. Sharpening and blurring are convolutions, which involves manipulating the surrounding pixels for each pixel that is treated. So for the most accurate representation, you will want to be at a 100% view, so you are seeing the full resolution image. So that was a walkthrough of a narrowband data edit in Affinity Photo. Don't forget that the whole layer stack process is non-destructive, so you can easily go back and revise your edits by manipulating the layers at a later date. For example, I could hide the two enhanced signal layers to see what the result would be like without them. Or I could reduce the opacity of the enhanced nebula structure layer to soften the contrast around the nebula detail and see what that looks like. To restore the opacity to 100%, I can then use the zero key. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful and thank you for watching.